The self-leveling arm and unit is attached to the rear sway bar behind and off to the left side of the rear differential, as indicated by the red arrow. You're going to be working with hydraulic line fittings, so make sure you have the right tool. That tool is a flared nut wrench. The wrench is designed to grasp five sides of the soft fitting and keep them from stripping or rounding. Due to the type of hard lines used, if you round or strip one of these fittings, you may end up replacing the whole line. With the car jacked up and properly supported, remove the hydraulics line shown here. You will need an 11mm flared nut wrench. Be ready with a catch pan. You may lose a few quarts of fluid. Make sure on the supply and return lines, you use a 17mm wrench to hold the big connections on the valve. You don't want to remove those, only the hydraulic lines that thread into them. Once the hydraulic lines are disconnected, remove the 10 mm nut holding the lever arm to the rod. With the hydraulic lines and the lever arm disconnected, remove the two nuts and bolts shown here. Do not take the other two out yet. They hold the two halves of the valve together. Once the valve is removed from the car, clean all the grime and build up off the valve so you don't get any of it in the valve when you take it apart. Make sure the holes where the hydraulic lines go are kept clean and plugged so nothing gets into them either. Now remove the two bolts holding the two halves of the valve together. Then carefully pull the valve apart. Pay close attention to the way things come apart. It will make reassembly much easier. In my experience, the cam sticks to the side of the valve with the O-ring. Be prepared if that happens to yours. With the two halves apart, remove the old O-ring and clean the sealing surfaces. Make sure any solvents are cleaned off, and then put the new O-ring. O-ring number one seals the two halves of the valve together. Remove the cam from the valve and set it aside on a clean rag. Then gently pull the piston out of the valve. It can be stuck in pretty tight depending on the condition of the O-ring inside. So be careful that you do not lose any parts. There are two steel ball bearings inside the valve, a small one and a big one. Do not lose them. Separate and clean each part of the piston assembly. The photo below shows the order they go together and where the O-rings number two and three are located. Carefully remove the O-rings. Make sure not to scratch anything. Clean the sealing surfaces and put in the new O-rings. It may also be helpful to give the whole piston a light coating of suspension fluid to help prevent any binding when putting it back into the valve. The small steel ball goes inside the inner piston, then is followed by the small spring. The large steel ball floats back and forth in the channel at the bottom of the hole where the piston goes and should be located towards the center of the valve. O-ring number two seals the inner piston to the outer piston. O-ring number three seals the outer piston to the body of the valve. Here's a schematic of the valve that might help you with assembly. 3D is the small steel ball which is inside the piston assembly. 3F is the large steel ball, which is in the channel at the bottom of the hole for the piston assembly. To get O-ring number 4 and 5, you will have to remove the rod that goes through the body of the valve. Before you remove the lever arm from the rod, index the end of the rod and the lever arm so you can put them back together in the same orientation. Then loosen the nut and remove the lever arm from the rod. With the lever arm off, you can pull the rod out from inside the valve. Note some of the early 123 leveling valves only have one O-ring instead of two. If this is the case with yours, just replace the one and save the other. O-ring number four and number five seal the lever arm to the body of the valve. Proper placement of the cam and alignment of the lever arm is key for the valve to work right and sit level when unloaded. After replacing O-rings number 4 and 5, put the rod for the cam and lever arm back into the valve. Put the cam into the rod so it is lined up as shown. You will also have to pay attention to which way the rod is rotated. You need to have the notch on the rod for the bolt on the lever arm in the right location. 
Once you have the cam on and the notch is in the right place, you can put the lever arm on and use a four millimeter diameter locking rod to assure that the lever arm is in the correct place. Now you're ready to put the halves back together. Once the valve is back together, reinstall it back into the car. Be careful when you thread the hydraulic lines from the accumulators back into the valve. The valve is in aluminum and if you cross thread your connections you will be looking for a new valve. Thread them in by hand and make sure they aren't cross threaded before you tighten them with a wrench. You will need to refill the suspension fluid reservoir. The system is self bleeding so you won't need to do any bleeding. Start the car and look for leaks. If there are no leaks, shut the car down and have a large helper, or two child size helpers, sit in the back. Then start the car and watch to see if the rear end lifts up as it should. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article, along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.